Welcome back here at Archie Clyde's in Newburgh, all about sports built by Kite Home Center, Dan Griscolo and Jeff Crowley. And joining us now from uh, the Evans Velados, the play-by-play man, Mike Radomski. Mike, how are you? Dan, yeah, thanks for having me on. I'm doing very well right now. Well, season's over, so have you had a chance to catch your breath a little bit? A little bit. I'm not one to really just stop everything once the season's over. I still have that intensity of just going from one day to the next. So I've been busy helping everyone out at Bossy Field, making sure that everything's taken care of and we're ready to go next year, too. All right. Well, uh, you know, a lot uh, with the autos here in the last couple of days with regard to uh, who the manager is going to be. Andy McCauley, who took over midway through the season, uh, will be back next year. So I guess maybe your thoughts, Mike, on uh, Andy coming back. It's been great working with Andy this year. Even in my first year with professional baseball, I went through a managerial change. So you had Wayne Krenchicki and his staff being released. And then you have the new man, Andy McCauley, coming in with his staff. And it was a little bit interesting at the start because I didn't really know how it was going to handle. But once Andy came in there, he had a set routine. He had an agenda. And when he started to go through that with the ball players, with the front office, and with everyone else around, including the booster club, everything just started to click. Now, maybe the wins weren't there, but you started to sense that he had this bigger plan for this team. And as the season went along, you would see him working with the players. So instead of just being behind the cage, you'd see him hop out, go through a swing with someone saying, you're not getting your front foot down. Or he'd hop in the field and actually show you. If you're ranging to your left, you got to make sure you keep the glove down to the ground. So he's working with them nonstop, and that's what a lot of people don't get to see. Andy McCauley is a great coach, and if he has that full season next year where he can help pick his players and actually go through his full plan from beginning to end, he's going to do a phenomenal job. Yeah, I guess maybe the people that got to see an awful lot of this Otters baseball team, they said it was just kind of the inexperienced youth. You know, a lot of the teams around the league who had a little bit more experience. Uh, the ballplayers might have been a little bit older, and that's been kind of their their Achilles heel for the last couple of years. Do you foresee, uh, without naming any names, some of these most of these players back next year, or do you think he might go in a different direction? Well, with most of the teams in the Frontier League, you're going to see a type of transition from one season to the next. So looking forward from the honors from 2010 to 2011, yes, you will see some players not coming back next year. It's just part of what professional baseball is. But I can already go through a bunch of names that I honestly could see coming back for the next season. And I think Andy McCauley can do the same thing, that he's already gone through the list because even though the season's done, He's not going home thinking that, all right, I have four months off, five months off. He's with the perspective that I have to go into this next season knowing I want these guys back and circling names on the free agent list saying I want these guys in Evansville so we can win a championship in 2011. When these guys are under contract and, you know, when you talk about the top level or double A and triple A and the guys that can play winter ball, now, is that available to people in the Frontier League? I mean, can Andy get these guys to do something over the winter time? So when they come back to spring training, and again, a lot of these, some of these guys, you know, are, are you know play college ball, and then after they get done with the college, they get signed by the Otters. But the ones that are back that already got paid to play, don't have any college eligibility, can they do things in the winter time and get in the league and play somewhere? Absolutely. I personally had a few conversations with the players. One of them, Jeff Hansen, who was a designated hitter and an outfielder, and he already had the mindset of once the season's done, I'm going to go back, take about two weeks off, and then I'm going to go right back into the gym. I'm going to go right back out to the baseball field. And he's actually hoping to go out and enter one of those winter leagues because one of the best ways for these players to keep playing baseball and keep getting better is by getting right back onto the field, going through your routine. So much like going through a radio show where you have one segment and then into the next segment, you start to build stronger and stronger. Same thing with these guys. You stay in the cage instead of going from May until September. If you do that year-round, you're going to be so much better so that next season you'll be right back out there. And I know some of these guys, like Jeff, are doing that same thing. They want to keep playing, and they want to keep getting better so they can reach their goals and reach the show. Well, that, yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, if, if you want to get better, you're going to have to work at it 12 months a year. And so not only to benefit the Otters next year for the guys that come back, but also get your name out there to take that next step up to single A, double A, or triple A ball, or like you said, maybe and get to the professional level. Because, I mean, we've seen that more and more in the last five or six years where people that you watch play for a professional baseball team, they were in the Frontier League at one time or another. 
And you can just mention some of the guys that have gone through the Frontier League and have made it. Jason Simontaki, he was playing with the St. Louis Cardinals for a few years. And Evansville's own George Sherrill, he's pitching with the Los Angeles Dodgers right now. So those are some of the bright spots that you can actually hang a picture up on the wall and say, if you want to be like George or if you want to be like Jason, put in your time, put in your hard work, and you can be just like those guys, live in the dream. All right, so your thoughts your first year in Evansville, just the, the fan support, the crowd out of the Boston Field this summer. It was it was hot. I know a lot of times that, uh, boy, people sit, that, to sit out of the ballpark when it's 100 degrees uh, heat index, but, uh, you know, some of these fans will, you know, through thick and thin, they'll be out there to support the Otters. And that's one of the best things that I've come to love about Evansville. It doesn't matter if the team is winning 70% of the games or if they're winning 30% of the games. These fans are always going to come out. They're going to love their baseball, and they're going to want to be a part of it with everyone else around them. And that was actually one of the polls we put up on the website. What are some of the biggest things you're going to miss about Evansville Otters baseball when it's done after the year? And a lot of the fans actually wrote back it was the community because they have that feeling, that knowing. I have this person next to me that I've been sitting with them for every single game, not this season, but the last 10 seasons. And the fans have just been incredible. And that's one of the biggest things that I'm going to remember about Evansville in my first summer here. How did the Otters do attendance-wise in the league? They finished right in the middle. They crossed over 100,000, which is one of the biggest goals for a lot of these Frontier League teams. And they did very well. We had some nights where there were five, six, seven thousand 7,000 people out there. And I can't tell you how deafening it is at Bossy Field because you have the roof above and all the noise that they're making just bounces straight off the top and comes right down like a bouncy ball. It was unbelievable this year. And how does Bossy fit? It's the third oldest professional ballpark in the United States. How does it rate? Because I've seen the, the ballpark as you're going to Cahokia towards East St. Louis. There's looks like a new uh, ballpark there in the Frontier League. How does Bossy Field rate compared to the other venues? It, it actually ranks very well. It's right there at the top of my list. I love Bossy Field. I came from some older ballparks like Wakona Park in Pittsfield, Massachusetts, which has been seeing baseball since 1895. And it's so old that it actually has sun delays because it faces west before they had any idea of night baseball ever being created. So I, I've come from a lot of older ballparks, and I absolutely love Bossy Field. If you compare it to some of the other fields around the Frontier League, it's at the top because you have some newer ballparks, which a lot of the fans like. But they're more cookie cutter. They're much like any ones that you could see across the country. Bossy Field is unique. It's a jewel, and it is unbelievable. Players mentioned to you that the infield, for example, at Bossy Field is the best infield in the league, or anything like that in regards to the actual playing conditions. Well, they, I talked to them a lot during the year, and they've mentioned things about the field that it just has that feel that you know a, a future Hall of Famer has played here or an old-time Hall of Famer has played here. And as you just continue to go through it, like walking down the tunnel from the clubhouse to the dugout, the dugout onto the field, you just feel that there's so much history in every single brick. And a lot of the players have said the same exact thing. It's incredible. Well, I mean, you could... Mark Senzel and I were at one of the games, and we just started talking about the best players that have played at Bossy Field, and it's just an incredible list. Oh, uh, it's unbelievable. It is an incredible list from top to bottom. You have so many Hall of Famers that have been on that same diamond. We have, from the, the Reds stopping in to play games or the Cardinals stopping in, the Tigers yep. coming in to play games, it's just an incredible list of people that have played here. Since uh, what the gates opened in, what, 1915 or something? Ron, there, wasn't it? 1915. So you yeah. think five years from now they're going to be having a 100th anniversary at Bossy Field. Jeff Crowley will be there. All right. Well, Mike, uh, so I guess right now uh, you, you want to come back for the 2011 season. I'd love to be back for the 2011 season. I've already talked to Bill Bussing uh, about a little bit of it, just how much I enjoy this city because I came from New Jersey where everything's so hustled, so rushed that you really don't have any time to breathe. Out here, it's breathing in the sense that baseball means so much. It's sometimes even more than just breathing in itself. It's a great city. I'm still learning bits and pieces of it going down the void or going out here <laughs> towards the... It's just it's great because you never really can see every single part of Evansville. I love this place, and I would enjoy being back in 2011. Well, we enjoyed having you on the show, and uh, again, uh, I know you enjoyed your season. Hopefully next year will be a little bit better fortune for the Otters, but thanks for coming by. Thanks for having me on. I really do appreciate it, gentlemen. All right, that's Mike Rodowski. He was the uh, voice of the Evansville Otters.